Hey everybody, Kevin Kramer here for DrawingColoring.com and in this video I'm going to show you just, uh, I've had a few requests for what do you do in your sketchbook? What do I do in my sketchbook and what you can use it for and why would you even keep one? So that's what we're going to tackle in this video. Stick around and I'll be right back. Alright, so sketchbooks. I've talked about this in my podcast, uh, which you can find. It's called The Articulate Podcast. You can go there and check it out. It's also uh, something that I use frequently whenever I'm um, thinking about ideas or have just something that I want to conceptualize or make it a little more crystallized in a real format that I can see. So what I do with uh, as you can see here, I figured I'd give you some, just kind of flip through some of the sketches that I have through all the different sketchbooks, kind of see how I use it. And, you know, you don't have to be as complete and finished as some of these images might look. I kind of like to go full on and see where I can push it before I actually get in there. But, you know, it's really the sketchbook, the idea and the purpose behind the sketchbook is to get ideas down, work through them, and get the concepts crystallized and formed so you can work on bigger pieces. It's really a playground for where you for you to just work and do whatever you want without judgment, without feeling like you're messing up and really just bring out the best images that you can and get them on get them out of your head and onto the paper. So, with that, I'll go through a few of mine, give you some of the the ideas and concepts of why and how I created them and uh, then give you, yeah, so you can just get a little idea of where to go with yours. So in this one, I, this was from uh, 09, 2009, and I was studying a lot of Art Nouveau, as you can see, the motif here, and uh, I, for some reason I got uh, the idea to draw some elephants, you know, it's a very ornate, I figured I'd get in there, and a lot of this were a lot of these with different elements. This was an image from Google, and then I, I drew that. And I was very pleased with it, so I took it even further, the entire image. But these little, um, these little designs down here, these ornate designs around here, uh, were from an Art Nouveau book. And what I did was I kind of just took inspiration from those, blew them up, put them on the bottom, and then kind of worked from there. And that's really all there was behind this. There was a, a little bit of um, symbolism with the elephant, obviously, and you can look that up as however you like, but that was really uh, the mindset that I was in. I have, I really do like Alphonse Mucha and really the whole Art Nouveau mo movement, and this was really a culmination of all of that put into one with the symbolism of the elephant, and then all of the ornate imagery around it. So that, that's that one. And I did another series of these. I just did another elephant. It's, um, you can kind of see, it's a little, little more, a little harder to see. I drew it and then I erased all the lines after I inked it, so it's a little harder to actually see. This is the trunk and the ear and stuff like that. But same idea, same concept, just a different type of design. And here's some more elephants. Same thing, sketched it out, drew two elephants, a tree. There's like a little hidden owl up there just for to play around. And then I drew a little bit of uh, crazy stuff into the, the base of it. But the same motif just kind of played around with. And that's really another, some more elements from uh, Mooka's drawings and paintings. Let's see. And again, you don't have to go as fully finished as a lot of sketchbook artists and art that you might see that people say there from their sketchbooks. I know if you go to Audrey uh, Kawasaki's website, you go to there and you look at her sketchbook, it'll make you really intimidated because all of her sketchbook drawings looks so awesome. It's like they're finished pieces and you just feel like you have no talent. But really all they are all that those are doing is helping her work through her images and refine the ideas. And that's really all that these are. 
I took this drawing, which is me, that's me, this is really a representation of a dream that I had, and I took it, I get a little bit more of that Art Nouveau style, and I just went with it. And then I just, when I was finished with this, I actually blew them up and did pastel paintings with them. And I did a series of these as two. There's this one right here, same idea, same kind of Art Nouveau concept, just made it with trees. And you know, I just worked through some concepts, some ideas, and it's really not even a finished thing, depending on how you look at it. You can see I got a little owl up there again. Same thing with that elephants. This one is, again, not, it was really um, studying the eyes and drawing the nose and really kind of just putting, just testing out how to compose and really portray some really, Im really impactful images that I was working with at the time through my head. There's another one, it's not, that's another attempt. You can see kind of the rough outlines and things there, but it's not finished, but you can see where I started, how I went about it. I outlined it like I show in a lot of my other um, images. And then I started drawing that, and then I added in the detail. This is another one. This was actually for uh, a contest, but you can see same concept, same idea. I think I got a Google image from the baby. And um, again, my face, sleep like a baby, and some Art Nouveau style in between there. And these are just some sample images you might have seen in some of my other videos. These are still, these are practice. You know, drawing mouths, you, all of these mouths are gonna, they're all practice. Any image you draw is gonna be practice. They don't have to be perfect, and they don't have to be finished works of art. Here's another same concept, a little more loose. And let's see, here we go. I like this one a lot. This is a perfect example. I was drawing some, um, it was archetypes. I had a theme. It really helps if you, when you go into your sketchbook, if you have some kind of theme or central idea that you're trying to work through. If you, if you don't do that, you, you might just end up with a lot of doodles and you can do that anywhere but what you want to what I think the sketchbook really should represent is full not full concepts but concepts that will eventually work themselves into bigger pieces if not then you can just practice getting certain um, aspects down maybe figures or hands you can just do an entire sketchbook of hands, or an entire sketchbook of faces, lips, mouths, whatever you want to practice on or just get better at. So one, get pra practice to make perfect. Two, work through concepts. And three, you know, kind of just, um, just get stuff out of your head. That's really the three main reasons I use sketchbooks. If I'm inspired to do something else, I'll usually go to my sketchbooks and then I'll refer back and add different elements. And then you can always repurpose them for other things. This was a, a design I did for Bonnaroo with the, you can see like the words through here kind of coming down. There's another one I did. This was apart when I was just drawing my face. Uh, again, it's on a flower, it's blooming. Procrastination is the name of this one. The guy sitting up there with popcorn with a all fat belly, just having fun, kind of working through some things. This goes back with the other images of the kid with his muscles, kind of archetypes that I was trying to go through. There's a logo. You know, you see, you can just do whatever you want and just practice, practice, practice. T-shirt designs. This was one I was working on. Balls to the wall. Thought that was that was okay. And you know, any type of image. Here's a good one. 
just just musing. You can just go crazy and just draw whatever you got going on in your head. Or just kind of see where the pencil takes you. And you'll really, you'll be surprised at what comes out and you might get some kind of trippy psychedelic stuff like this. And I, I wasn't on anything when I drew that, but it looks pretty crazy. So, again, you don't have to There's another one. Don't read too deep. You don't have to read too deep into the sketchbook. Just use it how you want to use it. You can follow those three guidelines that I use. Those will pretty much cover whatever you're doing in the sketchbook. But don't get hung up on, I'm not using it right. I'm not doing this right. Just use it and get your ideas out of your head and down onto it. And then you'll you'll have a lot more freedom you know you can practice your drawing strokes you can do whatever you want in it let's see here's another one so you know if you have a dream put it down work through it all of these things that's really um, all that you really need to do here's some more Here's a, another sketchbook, different paper. All I did in this one was work through uh, some Facebook friend photos. Took them, they look complete. They're not, they're not as complete as you think. They're just, you know, you can play around, use watercolors, pencils, uh, colored pencils, just different mediums you wanna mess around with. Just make sure the paper is hard and thick enough, is thick enough or heavy enough to take those and just go crazy. So I hope that that gave you some kind of ideas of what you can do or how to use a sketchbook. And uh, if you have any recommendations, comments, questions, leave them below this video. If you're not watching this on YouTube or you're watching it somewhere else, go ahead, shoot over to there and hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'd love to hear whatever you have to say or any comments or if you have suggestions for other videos. And I'll see you in my next video.